Greetings to you. My name is Pastor Dan Forehand, and I serve as Assistant of the Bishop for Ministry Transition in Indiana, Kentucky Synod. I'm grateful for the chance to share with you a sermon and prayers for July 16th, 2023, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. I bring you greetings from our Bishop, Bill Guffian, the rest of the Synod staff, and your siblings in Christ throughout the Synod. We'll begin today with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading for today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose... They were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among, thorn, among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the word and the, the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends, grace mercy, and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I do not have a green thumb. Sometimes I even wonder if I have poison on my thumb. If it was possible to kill a fake plant, I'm sure I could figure out a way to do that. Now, I've always wanted to like gardening. I'm, I'm grateful for fruits and vegetables. I love walking around a beautiful botanical garden and seeing the, the beautiful color and diversity of gardens, but gardening is just not my gift. And that's okay. I can still enjoy it. And I've always been impressed by plants and trees that grow in places where they really shouldn't. Have you ever seen a tree growing out of the side of a mountain? or on a hill, or a beautiful flower that grows through that tiny crack in a parking lot? Or have you fought through weeds and found a scrumptious berry bush just waiting to share its bounty with you? These plants grow in unpredictable places, so when Jesus speaks about good soil and rocky soil and birds eating off, seed off the path and thorns and all the things, I wonder if there's an invitation for us to be surprised. Like when you see a corn stalk growing up in the middle of a soybean field. Surprise! Now, Jesus explains the parable, but only after his disciples ask him to. We skip that part of the reading. I don't think Jesus really wants to explain it because the purpose of a parable isn't for a one-size-fits-all kind of approach with answers. Because parables are about surprises, too. You know, the natural world is all about surprises, even in its predictability. 
We, we know our watches, our, our calendars tell us when the sun will rise and when it will set. We know when the tide will come in and when it will go out. We know when the days will lengthen and when they will shorten. We know all of these things about our world, and yet we are surprised by it too all the time. I wonder if God is like that too. And I wonder if sometimes we have painted God in one particular style and we cease to, to dance with God and see that God is actually much more complex than the predictable ways with which we try to interact with God. I wonder if God loves us so much and if, if God's love is so abundant that it's just raining seed all the time. I wonder when I've missed God's love and grace pop up in places that I've described as rocky or not great for growth, so I haven't even bothered to look for it. I wonder when I've missed certain people be messengers of God, but I've seen them as birds simply flying by, eating the seed, instead of actually spreading it. I wonder when I've been so busy critiquing things and judging soils and judging the sower that maybe I've missed the whole point of the story. I wonder when I've been so focused on getting an answer right that I've completely missed the point of the question. I wonder when I've lost the wonder and have turned the gift of love into something that can be simply understood and explained rather than experienced and embraced. Clearly, <laughs> there's a lot to wonder. And it can be comforting to know that the disciples 2,000 years ago wanted answers and wanted these parables to be explained. But I also see the crowd. It's a crowd made up of children and adults, of sowers, of people who fish, of those who had much and those who had little. I see this crowd and see that they're actually quite fine with the parable without the explanation. It's the disciples who want to know. Now, now, maybe it's because they were just smarter than the disciples and me. Or maybe they knew deep within themselves, in heart, mind, spirit, that the goal of God's love is not to be explained, but to be experienced. Not to be poked and prodded, but to be shared. Not to be compared or concerned about the quantity that somebody has or does not have, but is meant to be received and seen in its overwhelming abundance. Friends, I think about the various amazing ministries that are happening in this synod that seem like they're about one thing, but are oftentimes really about something entirely different. We have congregations that have laundry ministries that help people to have clean clothes, yes. But, but more importantly, they're all about the conversations and the relationships that happen in the laundromat as the clothes spin round and round the washing machine. We have congregations that are giving young people musical instruments so that kids, yes, can afford to have their own instrument to play and practice, but more importantly, it's about developing connections with adults who care for them and say that these children matter. We have congregations that have food pantries so that all people may have enough food, yes, but also so that all people can see their worth and their dignity. In some ways, the parables of Jesus aren't that different from the stories that we tell. There is much more going on than meets the eye. The layers of understanding, meaning, and connection can't always be quantified and measured, but they oftentimes are the work of the heart. Because growth happens in strange ways in creation. And growth happens in strange ways within each of us, too. A word of grace spoken to us in a moment of trauma might be forever life-changing. A word of hope spoken to us in a moment of frustration might be spoken into the most fertile soil imaginable, even if it looks pretty rocky to us. Because the invitation we have as believers of Jesus is to move beyond knowing everything and to move into a place of awe and wonder at what is around us. 
for surprises exist around every turn if we're just willing to ask for our eyes to be open and to see what Jesus wants to show us. So as we hear parables like this one from Jesus, may we have the courage to sit with them and see what they might speak to us. May we have the curiosity to see what the great sower might possibly work in our lives and how new life and growth might pop up in surprising ways. May we experience God's grace and love for us, not just as something to know, but something to know deep within us. And friends, may God's grace and love transform you and inspire you and be a constant reminder that you are not alone. God is with us whether we are green thumbs or not, whether we've been at this walk of faith for a long time or not, Jesus is here. And that's good news for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue now with our prayers of intercession. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation, through the Synod, and throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and flowers and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Heal those who are sick, O God, especially those we name before you now. Guide healthcare workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for victims of abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And hear us now, gracious Father, as we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, receive the blessing of our Lord. May the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace. Share the harvest. Thanks be to God. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you today and always in all things. May God be with you.